welcome and thank you for tuning in to Black Women Amplified, the podcast. Your host, Monica Wisdom Tyson, brings you downloadable conversations that matter to women around the globe. We discuss all things black girl magic, amplify our voices, and transform our challenges into triumphs. Monica calls on her league of extraordinary women to push our boundaries, share their expertise, and stories of personal transformation. Welcome your host of Black Women Amplified, Monica Wisdom Tyson. Hello, everyone. How are you? It is Monica Wisdom with the Black Women Amplified podcast. And I am so thrilled and excited to be with you today. Today, we're going to talk about your dreams. But of course, before I get into that, I want to just share some news. One of my sister friends, Rochelle Carey, the award winning journalist, has an article out in Essence magazine this month. And it is her sharing her news about her son. It's so exciting. I've been holding on to this news for a year. Um, Well, since last year. And she adopted a beautiful baby boy. And she is sharing her story. Like I always tell you all to do. She's sharing her story in Essence Magazine. And it's on newsstands. And I think the digital version comes out maybe in a couple of months. But check it out. You can also go to her Instagram and she, you can see pictures of her and her son. It's just beautiful and glorious. And I'm so in love with him. I can't wait to physically meet him. But he's he's a kid after my own heart. He loves music. So Auntie Monica sends him musical stuff and books. I'm that auntie. So anyway, I just wanted to share that news and have you all plug in, check it out, and give her a lot of support because it's a... Uh, It's a great thing that she's able to achieve her dream of having a baby, and I'm so happy for her. This is all about dreams. And you know, it's the beginning of the year, so everybody's talking about manifesting, dreaming. And I love how the young people, the millennials and Gen Z especially, talk about manifesting. I remember when I was in my 20s and we were talking about manifesting, we were the weird kids. But now these kids, it's their everyday conversation. I'm going to manifest a trip. I'm going to manifest a partner. I'm going to manifest some money. I'm going to manifest opportunities. And they are making it happen. And it's so fascinating to see that this is a part of common conversation now. And it's just a beautiful thing to see because these are always considered the mysteries of the universe. And now it's in the mainstream. It's in the lexicon of all of our conversations. Well, many of us um, who are not traditional in our thinking. And every day it's more and more people creeping out of traditional thinking. Although traditions have their place, but we have to expand how we think and how we act. So I love this conversation of dreaming and manifesting and creating a vision because it's something I've been doing my whole life. I remember somebody asked me, uh, how was I able to do so much in my life without a college degree? I've taken like a year of college, community college. I took photography and creative writing. I've always wanted to do both. And I've done a lot with my writing. And when I was asked that question, it kind of How did Steve Jobs do it? How did a lot of people do it? How did people do it when black folks weren't allowed to have college degrees? You just put your mind to something and you do it. And then further further thinking about it without being flabbergasted by the question, I was like a lot of my life I have visualized and manifested opportunities, vacations, all types of things. And not only have I done it for myself, but I've taught it to other people who in turn have done the same thing. One, I talked about a couple of episodes back about my trip to Ghana. That was all manifesting. That was on my vision board. I didn't know how it was going to happen. I didn't know what it was going to look like, but I knew I wanted to be in Africa. And I knew I wanted it to be a spectacular trip. Let me slow down with my talking. I'm talking too fast. I get excited and I start talking fast. <laughs> so I, I I manifested it. I remember, here's a really big manifesting story. 
And I'm not going to mention the person's name, but this is 100% a true story. And he's giving me permission to tell it. He's like, you should talk about that on your podcast. So let's talk about it. I didn't plan to, but it comes up and it's perfect for what we're talking about today, about writing your dreams down and just speaking of them into the universe. So a few years ago, well, it was about, it had to be 2014, a friend called me and said he needed a place to stay. He was in between gigs and uh, he just needed some place to stay. I was like, okay, well, come on up. If you can get here, he lived out of town. If you can get here, get here. So he came, he stayed with me and we had anticipated him staying at least a month. Well, he stayed for a week. And let me tell you why. When he and I start having these after midnight conversations, they turn into these spiritual, universal, amazing conversations. Sometimes I wish we had recorded them. I was sitting I was sitting at my desk and he was on the couch or on the floor somewhere. We're just talking and I'm like, I can't talk like this every night. I need to go to work. But we were having one of our conversations and I was talking and I said, well, let me, he, you know, wanted to make some changes. I said, well, let me tell you about my vision boarding process. And he was like, what is that? So in my visioning process, and he didn't know what it was. So I explained it to him in one of our late night conversations. Now, as I'm sitting at my desk, I had done my vision board for the year. And on my vision board, I don't know why I always put Oprah on my vision board, but it was a picture of Oprah. It was a picture of a typewriter. And it was a picture of an Academy Award. And it was a couple of other things on this vision board. Well, he worked works in the movie industry. So we went in the midst of this. At this time, I was going to my manifestation, uh, not manifestation, my uh, meditation teacher every year. I'm sorry. I can't. Let me slow down. Slow down. I was going to my meditation teacher every week, every Sunday. That's what I did. And she's a fantastic meditation teacher. She teaches transcendental meditation. And and she was actually the Maharishi who coined transcendental meditation. She worked for him. So she went and opened up schools all over the world and was one of his main and first teachers, little black lady from um, Guadalupe. So went to see her. She taught him how to do transcendental meditation. So every day he would meditate and visualize what he wanted to happen. I was sitting at my computer and I was like, oh, look, isn't this your friend? And his friend's name is Lettucey, the singer. He's like, oh, yeah. I said, well, she's doing this new movie. You should call her. And maybe she can get you on the movie. Me not knowing how the industry works. I figure it's your friend. Call her. See what happens. That's what I do in my world. <laughs> so she called. He called her. And she never returned his call. And she was playing a character. She was playing Mahalia Jackson. So I was like, well, maybe you can make, you know, her costume, blah, blah, blah. And he had worked on movies before. It wasn't like this was something he wanted to do. This is his career. But he was, like I said, in between jobs. I promise you, we spoke this into existence. His phone had been turned off. We went and paid his phone bill. There was a message on the phone that said, hey, we've been looking for you. Ruth wants you to work on a movie with her. When I tell you the movie is the same exact movies Lettucey was featured in. We almost, we, we literally listened to the message and almost passed standing in the middle of my living room. And we almost passed out. It was like, are you shitting me? Are you shitting me? He was like, I have to be in Atlanta in two days So as he's talking, he's packing up his stuff to leave and somebody's driving him to Atlanta. He was literally here seven days and it was and we didn't have a timeline of when he was leaving. Let me tell you this. 
who's in the movie, is Oprah Winfrey. The movie is Selma. What does Selma get but nominated for an Academy Award? Everything that was on my vision board came true for him. I was like, I just ripped it down. I was so pissed. I ripped it down. I said, that's my fucking award. <laughs> Happy for him. But it was, it was, I said, I, 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 to this day, I said, you stole my dream. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do. I was like, well, maybe I'll write a screenplay. But the point is, is that the dream was written down and Maybe I just vesseled it for midwifed it or vesseled it for him, but it came true. And everything that we spoke came to pass because he ended up making Lettuce's dress um, in the movie, the Mahalia, Mahalia Jackson dress. He ended up making. He was in a movie with Oprah and it got nominated for Academy Award. And this is the God's truth of how powerful manifesting is if you get past your fears, get past your angst and realize that it is possible. Cause here's the thing. If you write it down, writing it down is like putting in an order with Instacart, right? You write it down, you say what you want, you pay for it. And then it magically shows up at your door. It's paid for, it's taken care of. You don't have to worry about how it's getting to your house, who's shopping for it. You just order it and it shows up. That's how manifesting works. But when manifesting goes into high power is when you let go of all the stuff that's no longer serving you. And I'll say it again. It's in a previous, we talked about that in a previous podcast episode. You should go check it out. But when you let go of all that stuff and you have a clean plate, then God gives you more than you had anticipated. <laughs> it was like, how in the heck? It was like, are you kidding? We just talked about this a couple of weeks ago is when I got the permission to tell the story. But it was one of those things where it was just confirmation that this work works. In fact, to the point... Now, this has nothing to do with me, but Twitter is doing a campaign called Tweet Into Existence. So they have pictures or screen, screenshots, not, 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 not screenshots, they put billboards all over the country of people who have tweeted something and then it came into existence. So there's four people I wanted to highlight. There's several people and the billboard campaign is beautiful because they're putting the billboards where the people come from. So like the first one is, uh, I want to highlight is Megan the Stallion. Let me get the quote. Megan the Stallion tweeted, I need a team because I promise this rap game is going to take off for me. She wrote this and this tweet, March 27th, 2014. Same year as Selma. And then Simu Lu wrote, okay, Marvel, we going to talk about, oh, let me go back. Okay, Marvel, are we going to talk about Shang-Chi or what? He wrote this in December 2018. And you know, the new Marvel movie, Shang-Chi, Shang-Chi, I don't know how to pronounce it, forgive me, came out in 2021. He got that job from this tweet, which is the point. Issa Rae wrote in July, on July 5th, she tweeted on July 5th, 2010, when I grow up, I want to be a more successful version of me. Since then, she got the HBO deal and the Insecure television show. And then she just got an eight, eight or nine figure deal with, I believe, Warner Brothers. All of this from one, this tweet to what was the this, this TV show she did on the internet? Um, I don't remember. I don't remember. You all know what it is. So that was Issa Rae. And then the fourth one I'm going to highlight, and there are several, there's athletes, business people, um, is Matthew Cherry. 
And Matthew Cherry is a director and a filmmaker. And he tweeted out on June the 2nd, 2012, I'm going to be nominated for an Oscar one day, already claiming it. And as we know, in 2020, he won the Oscar for his animated feature film, Hair Love. He wrote a book called Hair Love, and then they turned it into a cartoon, a a little, I think it's like a 10-minute feature. And all of this, they wrote it down, they tweeted it, and it went into existence, and it manifested in ways they couldn't imagine. Well, they did imagine it, actually, because... Matthew Cherry said he was going to win an Oscar, and he did. Megan Thee Stallion said, this rap gang going to take off for me. And clearly it did, after she's won Grammys and been all over the place. Simu Liu, Marvel's first Asian star, not even an Asian star, but an Asian story on the big screen. And then Issa Rae, I mean, black girl magic all over the place. So we, I say all that to say dreams come true when we, be, when we allow ourselves to become the magnet of our dreams. Because most people think that life happens to them. But the truth is that life happens through us. And when we clear out all this space and let go of all the things that don't matter anymore, we just become this huge magnet. But we have to believe and we have to feel like and trust that it's going to happen. And we can't worry about the how it's going to happen. We just have to take one step, then the next step, or like my mentor says, the next right step. And you just keep moving in your direction and then the universe meets you with your dream as you move forward. Let me just say that again. We take the next best step and the universe meets you with your dream as you move forward. Just like I will continue to say, my big dream is for this podcast to be the number one podcast around the globe for black women and the men who love us. (laughs) Everything in our life is because we have put that thought forth. And most people don't get that concept because people think that life happens to them. Everything that's around you, that's in your life, that's in your, your, your purview is something that you either thought before or something that you believe about yourself. And it's the story that we tell ourselves that comes true. And people always talk about mindset. I put it in the terminology of stories because our mindset is determined by the stories that we tell ourselves. For instance, if you if you are constantly being told by people or society, you ain't shit, you begin to believe that and you tell yourself the story, I ain't shit. So ain't shit stuff happens to you. But if you walk around like Muhammad Ali and say, I'm the greatest, great stuff starts happening around you because you are emanating or you're putting out, or you're magnetizing greatness. And so when we think about a mindset shift, shift, say that 10 times in a row, really fast. (laughs) I can't get it out the first time. But when we think about a mindset shift, we need to think about it in the terms of how we tell ourselves stories. And when I say how we talk to ourselves and tell ourselves stories, that little crazy, I call it the monkey mind or the crazy, you know, I'm not going to use the term crazy. Um, That little cuckoo in your head that says, you can't do this. You can't do that. Nobody's going to care. Who's going to believe you? Why would that happen to you? Who are you? That, conversation can stop when you counteract it with a different story. Muhammad Ali, I'm the greatest. Muhammad Ali, I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. I'm the greatest. He started hanging around great people. He started reading great books. 
He started having great experiences. He started having a great career because he put it out there first. He put an order into the universe and said, I'm the greatest. And then he walked forward in his greatness. He, he, his, uh, he hired the greatest trainers, right? He, he trained at the greatest places a black man could train. He, his trainer made sure, and Will Smith tells this story, um, tells this story in his book, Will, about when he was uh, taking on the role of Muhammad Ali, he talked to Muhammad Ali's, tra- Muhammad Ali's trainer, and he's the one who trained him for the movie, and talked about his work ethic and his belief system and his philosophies of how he trained Muhammad Ali. Nobody around him could have a negative mindset. Nobody around him could eat junk food. He was training a champion, so everybody around him had to follow a champion protocol. And Will took that on in his own life when he decided he wanted to be the number one movie star in the world. So all of these things are possible because there's space for it all, for all of us to live our dreams, whatever it is. But until you shift the story about who you are to yourself, you're not going to bring forth the things that allow your dreams to come true. Because we, like they like the say in the church, you block in your blessing. You block your blessing with your fears and your insecurities and your doubts. Nobody's blocking your blessing because the truth of the matter is the hierarchy of, of life goes. All things are possible with God, right? The universe is everything's available in the universe. The Bible says we would do greater things than he. So all of that is possible for us. But what we first have to do is believe that it's possible. And no matter what society has told you, your family has told you, your peers have told you, you have the ability to write a different story. So I say all that to say, Write it into existence. Tweet it to ex- into existence. Believe it into existence. And write your dreams down so that you can live the life that you were born to live. Because you, my friend, are the dreamer's dreamer. And you, my friend, deserve to live a magnificent life. If nobody told you today, You deserve to live a magnificent life. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode. And I hope that you got something out of it. I know I did. (laughs) I've been tweeting my dreams all day. (laughs) They had a Twitter spaces. I think it's still up. If you go to Twitter spaces as a recording of the conversations that were on there today. And I just got so hyped. One person had met Oprah. Another person worked with um, Bernice King. That was her tweet. Another person got sponsorship for her podcast. So there's all types of, it doesn't have to be this big, huge thing. It could be simply that I would like to sit front row at a Megan Thee Stallion concert. You know, I would like to go to Rihanna's Fenty fashion show. I don't know. Whatever it is. It's all possible. It is all possible. Sending you light and love. And don't forget, visit our Black Women Amplified shop at blackwomenamplified.com backslash shop. And also join our email list at monicawisdomhq.com. And there it will send you to a sign up where you're going to just add your email and you're locked in. I appreciate each of you. Dream bigger and share your story, share your dreams, and believe them into existence. Have an amazing day. Thank you for listening to Black Women Amplified. We hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to subscribe and log on to blackwomenamplified.com for more information. Keep shining.